come from, I think you've got more than 200 bank accounts. Oh. And that's why, I'm, that's why I'm very keen on this bank accounts issue. In your audit process, do you audit all the bank accounts or do you audit based on a mother presentation on the financial statements? I'm very, very keen on this. Do you actually require the auditing of all those, uh, all those bank accounts? Or if it's a functional account whereby probably like is giving uh, service to uh, you know, a, a, a major ticket, do you just look at the vote vis-a-vis -vis the financial statement, or do you go to these bank accounts as well as a verification indices for them? Because it's a very critical part of why there could be siphoning or leakages uh, of public funds. Uh, so the, 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 the first part is answered well, that we don't need more than 10 bank accounts, you know, in running services in the counties, which is something that we should follow in as a committee and narrow it down. And I hope that the chair, you can take note on this, because some, some governors was trying to justify why you must have more than 200 accounts for efficiency and effectiveness. But on the other side is the audit question. So as an auditor, do you actually delve into those accounts? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. There are specific audit procedures for bank and cash, cash and bank uh, uh, audits uh, or balances. So these take care of all those bank accounts. We look at reconciliations. We do third party confirmations sometimes on bank certificates. We look at the bank statements and then we follow through on the expenditures from those accounts. And that's why you find I raise issues on commingling of funds or the accounts uh, not being utilized for the specific purpose. Or sometimes you'll find a dormant account in one year or for two, three years, and then suddenly it receives money. The money comes in and goes out. So we follow and we find, you no, know, it was a vehicle to put aside. Uh, yeah, I think you also I, understand. I, I, are you trying to say a vehicle for eating? <laughs> but uh, just on my last question, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you allow me, you've raised two very important issues here. One issue is on the danger of leaving the law as it is to allow counties to set up funds. Do you then recommend to this committee that we should look into amending the law, the PFM Act? I believe, I think it's section 116, if I'm not wrong, um, on setting up funds, to limit the funds. So that's the first question. And then query number two, we have had this discussion about the IFMIS system. We have had this discussion about the IB in terms of uh, the payment system. Right now, the Senate passed a resolution that all counties must pay at minimum one billion by the end of the last financial year. What are your views in terms of trying to streamline and to reduce this issue of pending bills? Should we continue entertaining this discussion of having an end-to-end IFMIS -end system, which essentially makes it very difficult and denies the county treasury the luxury of changing at the last minute who gets paid? So such that if you input a, a, you know, a transaction, that, that transaction will end up in the bank account of the supplier, and there's no way that anyone can interfere. The CEO of finance or the CEO of the other department is the only person who would be responsible in ensuring that that transaction you know, gets to an end. If your comments to that, uh, to the affirmative, then do you then uh, see as a way that the auditor will, maybe the audit process will be faster, then you can actually be able to access it, like on a quarterly basis, and then, by, and then allow us now to come in and then introduce the new amendments, which I'm hoping that my colleague and I, or rather this committee, can bring in the amendments to ensure that the Auditor General begins the audit first of July, after the end of the, of the financial year. Okay. Uh, I think you can keep that as I asked mine, and then we conclude. Uh, there is uh, two issues which are uh, 
really um, a problem to devolution in this country. The first issue is the issue of let disbursement of funds to counties, uh, where sometimes the national government takes up to four or five months before funds are dispersed to the counties. And you know the implication of that. It comes uh, create spending bills, generates audit queries. We have seen so many audit queries related to that. Uh, is this an area that you uh, can consider prioritizing in terms of performance audit so that we really find out where the problem is? Because my understanding is that uh, the Treasury makes a decision on uh, exchequer releases based on the, uh, the income they get. Uh, they decide that pay so and so, pay so and so, and deliver out so and so. But the constitution is very clear that whatever is generated nationally, 15% of that should go to counties without undue delay. But there is someone sitting in treasury and uh, maybe uh, ignoring what is supposed to go to counties and prioritizing other things. And in that process, you find that counties have had to suffer. Some have had to borrow expensively from banks to be able to pay salaries and other things. And that also encourages corruption uh, in counties. So is it an area that you can consider doing a performance audit to find out what is this process at Treasury in terms of uh, how do they receive their exchequer and how do they release their exchequer so that we don't keep everyone in a waiting mood. The Senate every year we pass a disbursement schedule to counties with the specific amounts that will go to each county and the debts. But then someone there in Treasury decides to ignore all that and decides to prioritize other matters. So uh, I think that's an area that uh, maybe, uh, Madam Auditor General, you can tell us whether it's an area you are considering key in your performance audit. The second area is the processes at the, uh, the Office of the Control of Budget. We have uh, governors coming to stay in this city, uh, CEC finance coming to stay in this, chief officer finance coming to stay in this city, just to chase their approvals. Approval of uh, uh, expenditure at the control of budget. And now we are being told that the control of budgets has now decided to be doing the approval herself. She will go through massive files, uh, go, going through it herself. And you find that now, money was delayed to come to counties. When the money has come, the counties want to spend, they cannot spend. Because the control of budget will take a week, uh, a month to process their approvals. Is that an area that you are also considering? to do a performance audit so that we get to know what happens at the Office of the Control of Budget. Why is it that the Control of Budget has now decided to do the approvals, go through every file herself? So, because those are two issues that I find uh, impeding devolution in this country. And if you did a good performance audit, then as a Senate, we'll be able to act on your report and uh, that would improve uh, the way our counties receive money and the way approvals of expenditure is done by the control of budget. Okay.
<laughs> so maybe you can... Let me ride on your question, uh, Chair, uh, okay. very quickly. Thank you. As we are concluding, yes. uh, I've noted the concern that you've really raised in terms of delayed disbursement and putting in mind as a finance uh, committee, we ensure that we are very timely. Now then this, uh, Madam uh, Auditor General, then results to commercial loans mm -hmm. by the counties. Then further to that, there's the issue, of course, of the audit. What's your take as far as this issue of commercial loans uh, are concerned to the counties? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just want to write very fast on the on the COB because I think that I've seen in my county of Migori it being a major issue. And I want to just to narrow it down to a specific uh, element of it, because uh, I, I don't want I don't want us to put the auditor in a question where that looks like there's a ta uh, that, that there's a tussle between the auditor and the office of the office, office of the uh, the controller of uh, budget, uh, because the controller of budget under Article 228. I think section uh, five of that, well, that's about equal, uh, five of that, is required to authorize only finances to counties as authorized by law. But I think that the question that I wanted to strengthen their uh, auditor is that they consider a budget, then there is a vote to it, and then there is procurement. Where I've observed the control of budget spending out of time, which then leads to a lot of delays is in the consideration of procurement. So my specific question to this is, should the control of budget stop at the vote level and then approve, or should they extend to analysis of the procurement documentations? Or should the procurement documentations then remain a question of auditor uh, at a time of audit. I think that's, that's where I wanted to get clarity on in terms of the question that the chair asked uh, with regards to the COB delays. That's right. <laughs> right. right. Um, uh, auditor chair, or auditor general, just a point here. You asked a question on commercial loans and you've talked about a cost-benefit audit and whether and I'm sure you make recommendations whether, because these loans that counties take, one, there's no public participation, especially commercial loans. When you finally get your remittance from the, from, uh, uh, the exchequer, you're then repaying loans with interest. And that gap is not accounted for. What have you advised counties to avoid commercial loans? I know that there are late remittances uh, from treasury at times and counties end up getting overdrafts to pay salaries and I think there's been a recommendation and uh, you know all governors have spoken to this but should shouldn't guidelines be given to stop counties from taking commercial loans because it is not fair to service providers in the end there's a shortfall merely because so much money has been used to pay interest of loans that are taken without without a clear process. They are, it's not clear how they take those loans, how they repay them, and what agreements they have with commercial banks. Auditor, you can respond to that, and then uh, after your responses, we'll stop there. No more questions. Proceed. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, indeed, some of the comments um, and issues being raised would speak to the way forward for this committee to guide on how public um, resources should be um, managed or accounted for at, at the county level. So I take some of these comments as issues that this committee is uh, di discussing or debating and uh, in the final report uh, we'll give a way forward or recommendations for, for improvement. I want to speak to pending bills and I want to speak to the excuse because I use it as an excuse, I say it's an excuse that pending bills arise because there's delayed disbursement. Honorable Chair, if pending bills arise because there's delayed disbursement, then when the counties get their full disbursement in a subsequent financial year, total disbursement, then they should be able to clear those pending bills. 
straight and simple. There should be a correlation between the pending bills at the end of the financial year, if for example it's 200 million, and the outstanding exchequer releases from the National Treasury, which should be equal to 200 million. If that is not there, if pending bills are more than the outstanding exchequer releases, then you have a problem of fiscal indiscipline. And this brings to the issue of uh, who determines who to pay and when to void. I think you've seen in my reports these days, I'm even giving the number of voids um, in, in the IB and the amount of money and the dates that is happening. If the controller of budget, and I'll now speak about the controller of budget, has approved a payment to a certain supplier and it has gone through the process, why should it be voided at the time of payment? Are they going to present the same uh, outstanding bill to the controller of budget again for payment or how are they going to, to handle it? If the controller of budget has authorized for full payment and they do partial payment, how will they request for the partial payment? So there is fiscal indiscipline at the counties and there is fiscal indiscipline at some of the national government entities with regard to pending bills. However, there are those pending bills that arise because the, the fourth quarter exchequer releases their budget cuts or we are given a communication by Treasury, including the audit office, and that's why I have come to this uh, Parliament time and again to say ring fence the funding of the Auditor General, create a fund that when I'm expecting to pay, like 2024, I, I, I close the year with a pending bill of 24 million and a few other extras, because the amount I was expecting for exchequer releases that was delayed and came in end of June, was not adequate to clear all the pending bills. Which means because I had not budgeted for pending bills in the first quarter, the same thing affecting other entities, and they're supposed to be a fast charge and I try to adhere to the law, then it takes away my first quarter funds for audit services. So first it's important that uh, if you look at my county reports, you'll see a table these days on what was released in May what was released in June, what was released in July, because we are receiving funding in July and we are backdating it to June as part of the expenditure process. But that funding that comes, if it comes in its entirety, counties get their full funding for the year. So they should not say they have pending bills that has been pending for the last two, three, four, five years. Because do you have any outstanding funding for counties for 2023? 22-23, we don't. Maybe we have to for 23-24. When we top up or we add up all the pending bills for all the counties, does it amount to the billions that are yet to be released for the last quarter? If it doesn't, then let's sort the problem from the source. Let's look at the root cause of the problems. Let's not allow people to say pending bills are a result of delayed exchequer releases unless there's a direct correlation. Mine I can show because I'm, I'm, I also receive funding from the exchequer, the direct correlation on my pending bills against what was not um, released as at end of, um, end of June. So there are those issues specifically correlated and there are those where it's pure fiscal indiscipline. People committing for projects and programs and recurrent expenditures beyond what is available. We are of course hoping that accrual accounting will help because it means we can continue pro providing services and we don't rush at the end of the year and incur further expenditure and then we don't pay. Uh, we hope that will help accrual accounting so that we know the stock of pending bills. And Honorable Chair, pending bills now should be part of public debt. And I've, I've communicated this to both the National Assembly and the um, the CPA, the, the, the Honorable Kajuang's committee, that we have borrowed loans. You have talked about commercial loans, which you are concerned about. We have overdrafts. And now we are borrowing in kind. We have borrowed from our employees by deducting pensions and other statutory deductions and not paying. So we are borrowing from our employees because we are diverting those deductions for use for other operations. And now we are borrowing from the suppliers in kind. They provide us services, they provide us goods, we don't pay. 
So pending bills, in my next summary, I'll put it as part of public debt. And I think you saw in my last summary, I indicated that the public debt does not include the amount of pending bills. That was a forward uh, 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 notice. So let's look at the root cause of the issues, honorable members, to solve the issue of pending bills. We are still, even as we try to sort out the pending bills that have been in arrears for so long, we have not put in place measures to stop further incurrence. So we would have expected if we have committees that are working on pending bills, or we are paying attention to these, that 2024, nobody should have crossed the year with a pending bill. 2025, no entity should cross the year with a pending bill. So let's tighten the controls. And again, failure to pay is uh, 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 an offense in the Public uh, Finance Management Act. So I will stop there. That, that, uh, that issue, it doesn't need a special audit because I've issued a report on pending bills for all counties and I've issued recommendations and my audit findings, and if I've issued a summary. And my predecessor also issued the same. So how many times are we going to keep addressing an issue instead of providing a solution? The issue of um, control of budget, Honorable Chair, and uh, people have also come to me to ask uh, what the control of budget. I will just refer you to Article 228, sub uh, Article 5, that the controller shall not approve any withdrawal from a public fund unless satisfied that the withdrawal is authorized by law. Who are these determining her level of satisfaction? It is her to determine. If it means she takes every file because she sees gaps within the process, which now she will improve on, that is her purview, under her purview. So it is her level of satisfaction, not others to come in and say, don't look at this document, don't, uh, you're doing audit, uh, you're, you're encroaching. It is hard to determine her internal operations. And I would wish you'd support her because she comes before me. She is the one who gives you the warning signals with her reports, which I, I have been saying committees must now discuss. The same way you're discussing the Auditor General's reports. Because she gives you prior warning on a quarterly basis. And then I come in at the end of the year and can, I confirm what she was saying all along, that indeed it's true, that we have a problem. So if you take her reports and start discussing them and demand